Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Takeaways podcast. I'm your host here, Heidi Fang, and we are brought to you by Station Casinos, SCN Sports. Download the mobile app today. Joining me on the show, I've got a very good friend of mine. He does the Yards Per Attempt podcast as well as is the director of Fight Nation and Fight Programming on Sirius XM. It's Eddie Borsilli. Eddie, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Heidi. We're right in the business season of the NFL News doesn't stop, and it seems like every time something happens with the Raiders, it's a polarizing uh, subject. So it's good to be on here. It's good to see your face, and let's talk some football. Yeah, I don't even know where to start, especially when you say (laughs) things like polarizing, because the moves that have been made, I think a lot of people obviously expected what happened with Derek Carr. That seemed to have the writing on the wall from kind of almost the time he signed his contract extension. But when the Darren Waller trade happened, and today I was listening to some of his press conference on uh, the Giants website and seeing how he was so taken by surprise by it, what are your initial thoughts to that trade and how it was handled? Yeah, you know, something, I I always go back to the line, you know, men men lie, women lie, and you know what I mean? Like, it always comes back to that because, you know, it was 15 days ago that Josh McDaniels came out and said that obviously Darren Waller is going to be a big part of our offense, big part of the team moving forward. And you'd like to think that he knew 15 days ago that a trade for Darren Waller is probably on the table. It doesn't just come about that unless, you know, they they kind of move things around. But, you know, I, I think it really came down to Heidi, just the direction of this football team and kind of identifying whether this is a, a rebuilding football team or a team that feels like they can contend. And I, I really think that when they looked at the roster last year and you saw so many one-year players and things like that, I think they really looked at this roster and said, this roster is really barren of, of some depth and some, some talent. You know, they had the high end guys like Devante and Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller and guys like that, but for this team to really, um, you know, compete with the Kansas city chiefs and the Buffalo bills and teams like that, Hey, they had to solve the quarterback issue, which I'm sure we'll get into. And that's a big if, but I just think, you know, having a 31-year-old tight end um, that's making a lot of money as opposed to using that cap space for someone on the defense or splitting it up and getting a couple weapons, I just think, you know, they value those draft pick things. And I I think it's a realization moment for the Raiders and the Raider fan base to say this is a rebuilding team. This is a team that has not won consistently for a long time, and they needed the draft picks and they needed the salary cap space to build it. And hopefully Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels are, are the, you know, two guys to do that. What's funny to me is you'll never hear the word rebuild come out right now. <laughs> it's still just retool, refresh, yes, refresh, yeah, retool, refurbish, yeah. redecorate. Yeah. <laughs> the word re- uh, hasn't come out yet. But, you know, like you said, Jimmy Garoppolo, new starting quarterback. Yeah. Well, I, I shouldn't say starting yet. I shouldn't say starting because we don't know what's going to happen in the know. draft. Yep. We yep. don't know that he's necessarily going to win that job outright. If they bring in mm-hmm. someone like Richardson, who let's say throws everybody off their uh, rocker, like he did at the yep. combine, who knows, yep. who knows what'll happen, but just what are your thoughts? First of all, and Jimmy G coming to the Raiders. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I think it was something that uh, I, I think I tweeted it in like January saying it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo, like yeah. all the signs and for all the Tom Brady. Now, now, Heidi, I'll, I will say this. I, I think if Tom Brady chose to continue to play football, I still believe in my heart of hearts that Tom Brady would have been the starting quarterback of the Vegas Raiders this year. Just, uh, you know, coming back to Josh and, and the situation and the playmakers they had. And if that's the case, maybe down, uh, Darren Waller is still on this football team. Maybe it's it's Brady kind of going one last shot. Um, but, you know, Tom called the quits. So you had that one could kind of go out the window. And then they put the feelers out for Aaron Rodgers. And obviously the news comes out today that he's probably going to play for the Jets. And it just didn't work out uh, picks and compensation wise, the Green Bay Packers. So you got to kind of pivot. And what are the options, right? The the options in the free agent market weren't great. I think Jimmy Garoppolo was the best of the bunch. If you go down the Baker Mayfield and Jacoby Brissett and guys like that. And, you know, the familiarity with the coaching staff, a guy that's played in the system, a guy that was drafted by Josh McDaniels and when Dave Ziegler was there, you know, comes in right away. There's no learning curve, especially with the no offseason stuff and the limited time they have. You know, Josh doesn't have to spend a lot of time teaching Jimmy the the system and all he kind of does. So it made a lot of sense. And I think the biggest thing everybody's kind of wanted to see was what, how much they're going to pay him. You know, you know, Derek Carr make was making close to $40 million a year. If you pay Jimmy Garoppolo the same money, you know, what's kind of the difference, but you saw with Jimmy's contract, it was a little more team friendly and it wasn't 
over the top, you know, hitting the club over the head where the Raiders weren't going to be able to do anything. And I think for a guy that, you know, was injury prone has missed a lot of time, but Heidi, I mean, what, what everybody kind of misses, and, I, and people always say it was the defense in this, Jimmy Garoppolo wins. When Jimmy Garoppolo plays, Jimmy Garoppolo wins. He's a winner. He's done it with the Niners. He did it with the Patriots. Again, better football teams. And I, I think that's the model that Josh and, and Dave are kind of going for to say, Jimmy, we're going to load up this roster, make this roster better, and see if you can you know, carve out a niche and, and, and just change that change that switch in this organization and have a, a guy in there that's used to winning as opposed to, you know, a quarterback that just is beaten down and and, and kind of used to losing at this point. Yeah. I mean, there is something to be said about mental fortitude. I think you see it and uh, where Jimmy Garoppolo is concerned, my only, I guess, caveat or thought about uh, how he can maintain his own um, mental toughness <clears throat> is thinking that he is the starter right? Because of what he's gone through with Trey Lance and all the kind of back and forth with the 49ers as to whether or not he would be the starter if they drafted yep. someone to, you know, kind of say, hey, there's somebody coming under you here. You got to you know, compete now for this job. Like all of these things that happened back with San Francisco. Do you think like definitely that he is the guy starting this, you know, beginning of the season? Yeah, well, I, I look, the, the, at the position that the Raiders are in now, they're not going to be able to probably get up to pick one. The Carolina's there. They traded up, and they gave away a lot to get to pick one, obviously, for a quarterback. Houston's sitting there at pick two, I'm sure. So if you if you take, you know, the, the C.J. Stroud and the Bryce Young out of the window, you know, and maybe even the Raiders trade up and go after a guy like Anthony, Anthony Richardson. Yeah. Guys like that are not – Anthony is not ready to step on the field right away unless they really catch lightning in a bottle and compete. So, you know, I think the conversations with Jimmy Garoppolo are like, hey, Jimmy, come here. We're paying you like a starting quarterback. We're playing you like one of the top guys. And – but, like, to your point, Heidi, the best-case scenario is, hey, right now Jimmy Garoppolo is a starter. But the best-case scenario is they do draft someone, and all of a sudden OTAs and minicamp comes and training camp, and whoever they draft is a superstar. And at that point, you're like, hey, Jimmy, I know we're paying you, but same thing. We're going to play this guy. It's it just it's the nature of the beast. And there uh, there has to be conversations with Jimmy and his agent to say, like, we're going to pay you, but we're, we're still going to draft the quarterback and kind of, you know, the best man win. But, you know, as we sit here today on the 15th of March, you know, I, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is your, is your week one uh, starter, you know, depending on you know where they kind of go in the draft. I'm glad you said the date. I'm going to add the time. It's 5, about 30 p.m. here on the West Coast and 8.30 p.m. Eastern-ish yes. because I want to say that because in case anything should change from what we're <laughs> talking about, it becomes more important That's true. in the next few hours while I toil away editing. I want to make sure people know when this is recorded so that they're like, hey, you didn't talk about you because never, that is never, the nature of this beast you, as you, you well You never know. know when news is going to happen, especially the league year now, and it, it could happen at any time and things... Uh, Things are always in flux, especially with these roster side. So good call by you. Yeah, just had to do it. But <laughs> you know, when we talk about the team as um, just morale, when you start looking at all of these changes and you see a lot of the guys that with 32 unrestricted free age, oh, excuse me, unrestricted and restricted um, yeah. free agents going into this period, they've brought back maybe a very small handful from Roderick T. Murray to Jakob Johnson. Uh, some of these guys are starting to get you know, contracts made out, but um, how much uh, in team morale terms from last year to this year, does all of this shake up with Derek Carr changing over Jimmy G coming in, Darren Waller getting traded, Josh Jacobs getting franchise tag, and then even going on to Twitter to kind of write a little bit about mm -hmm. that and his reaction to Darren Waller's trade saying, e you know, I can't really say what he said on this <laughs> show, but it wasn't positive. No. So how do you think the team morale is? Do they have patience right now in the mytholo mythology that's happening with the front office? Yeah, I think it's a conversation to have, um, you know, anytime a new coach and a new GM takes over. And I know we're in a, in a, in a world right now that everybody needs, you know, instant gratification. We need to win now. We need to flip this around teams, but it really just, it doesn't happen that way. And I think last year you made a good point in bringing up all the one-year contracts. <clears throat> if, you know, they really trusted in those players, they would assign them to long-term deals, right? There really was a feeling out process to see what players fit, what players, you know, we like, what players are, are going to kind of go go on moving forward. And you see that a lot. You see that anytime a, a new regime comes in, it's going to be like, I want to bring my guys. And that, I, you know, I think a lot of that is the point of, of morale to bring in like your players. You're bringing in guys that you're used to. Jimmy Garoppolo played with Josh, like the guys like that, with the hope that those players come in and say, 
hey, Josh, Josh knows what he's doing. Like he's going to yeah. get this on the right track and, you know, we're going to be on the right track. But it really comes down to, you know, we could sit here and talk about morale and things like that till, till the cows come away. It wins. Like you start winning, like that's that's the only thing that's going to boost morale. Like guys are going to, you know, wear their emotions on the sleeve. Josh Jacobs is definitely an emotional type guy. He's still getting paid a lot of money. Hopefully they can get him a long-term deal. Devontae Adams is a true professional. He's going to go out there and give you everything he has. And I just think if the wins start coming, that's when the morale and the, and the change. The biggest problem with this football team over, you know, people got on me on Twitter today because I said 20 years. It's really been almost 30 years, basically, if you take out three or four. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem is just the, the losing mentality. And it's just a, a team that can never get over the hump. And then I think that's what they're trying to instill here. Yeah, maybe we're going to strip it down a little bit and kind of get down to the bare bones of this roster, but we're going to do our best to find these players and bring these players in to, to really change it. Because, you know, John and Mike Mayock did it, drafting all the Clemson players and the Alabama players and bringing those guys in and the core players. And it just didn't work because the team just didn't win enough. So I, I really think... You know, morale is what it is. These guys are paid professional football players. I think at the end of the day, all they want to do is win. Yeah, let's talk about just one more thing on that note with you mentioning how much so many of the guys that they're bringing in do know the system. Part of what I'm wondering is, you know, we talked about the pros of that, obviously. Yep. Are there is there a downside to bringing in too many guys <clears throat> that know the system? Yeah, I mean, the downside is Bill Belichick's not coaching his football team. So <laughs> if you want to say, like, we're, we're doing the page, I, I, I get a kick out of that every time. It's like the Patriot Patriots way, West. the Patriot way. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know Josh has been a really, really successful offensive coordinator, but Josh has not proven that he could be a, you know, a successful head coach in the NFL. And Bill Belichick is not standing aside. So it's not really the Patriot way. So I think there's a downside to say, you know, that we're going to do things exactly the same. I talked about it when we started this, that, you know, men, men lie, women lie. And Josh saying that we're going to get a quarterback and, you know, we're going to, you know, put the system, we're not going to make plug him in and make him play our system. We're going to fit a system around him. Well, you kind of just signed Jimmy Garoppolo who knows your system. So it's basically your system. You're not really tailoring it to anybody, uh, you know, depending on who they go after in, in the draft. So I think there's a little bit of downside in that because you fall into some bad habits and try to say, Hey, we're going to do things like we did with the Patriots, but oh yeah, you know, we had Bill Belichick and we had Tom Brady, the best quarterback that's ever lived, and they can cover up a lot of deficiencies that maybe some other teams can. So there are there, I think there are downsides to that and trying to do that. I think you need to take a little bit of what you did and how many Super Bowls you won and kind of, you know, turn the page and say, I'm going to do things a little bit differently and kind of create your own your own way. And I think players kind of see through that a little bit. A little bit differently, we will find out more of what that means tomorrow because I just, as you noticed, maybe my hands were going around, uh, <laughs> RSVP'd myself for the free agent press conference. It does not list specific names, but we can imagine yes. at Raiders headquarters, 11 a.m. Nice. on Vegas time. I'll be there. You want me to jump on a flight yeah, right now? On, I'll, on, be, I'll be out there. Come on. <laughs> get on down. I heard it's like, you know, raining pouring in Nor'easter over there. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, get yourself some sun, come here to Vegas where it's also <laughs> raining, but not so bad. We're going to take a break, come back here and talk a little bit more about some of the new additions to the Raiders when we come back. So, Eddie, I've got here a list of names from, like we already mentioned, Roderick Teamer, Jakob Johnson, okay. guys that are already coming back. But on top of that, you have um, from the Steelers, uh, Spillane, you've got the safety and Epps coming from the Eagles. What do you feel about those signings so far and just how much like those guys may be able to bring some impact to the defense? Yeah, the first thing that kind of that kind of struck me is, is a lot about what we talked about is signing them to multi-year deals. It's not just one year, kind of come and improve it. It's guys that are younger players. You know, every time in free agency, you know, my stance is always targeting guys that are you know kind of turning the corner in their life in their careers to say like, hey, we were good players. We're gonna maybe turn into semi-great players. They're still younger, so I like the you know Marcus Epps is a, was a six-round guy that really kind of worked his way up and ended up starting on, on a team that made the Super Bowl and, and contributing quite a bit. And Robert Spillane is a guy that <clears throat> will hit anything that moves. There's that gift <laughs> of him at the goal line with Derrick Henry taking, you know, taking Derrick Henry on, which is no easy task. I think it's it's those guys, you know, the fan base is not going to get excited because it's not guys that, you know, are household names and it's not these guys, oh, 
but these are the guys on on given on given weeks that could turn a tide or could win a game for you. You know, these are these are starting. You know, they're getting paid like starting players. You know, in the three four scheme. You know, Robert Splain's going to be one of those run, those linebackers. We don't know if Denzel Perryman's going to come back. Obviously, Epps is going to be paired with Trayvon Merrick, who you know Raider Nation has been hoping <clears throat> that's that's really turned the corner and turned into a good to great player. So you're really hoping with these signings that you're getting guys that are in the prime or on the verge of the prime of their career, not overpaying them yet and sign to multi-year deals, but you could put them in your system. And I really think the biggest thing is, you know, they probably in my eyes identified and Patrick Graham on the defense side identified smart football players, guys that are going to be heady football players. Patrick Graham mentioned that a bunch last year about identifying those types of players um, that could know the scheme and know where to be and be in the right position. It's not, you know, Marcus Epps needing to have 10 interceptions next year to make a play, but being in the right position at the right time. So they're not giving up, you know, deep passes or not giving up chunk players or getting off the field on third down. So I know they're not shiny objects, but hopefully they're guys that, that will be, you know, key starters next year for the Raiders. I've been wanting shiny. I didn't think that Shiny came out of uh, Jacoby Myers. Am I wrong about that? No, yeah, he, he's a guy. I mean, it's it's kudos to Jacoby Myers for for, uh, yeah. for coming to Vegas and knowing that that play would be on replay twenty four seven seven days a week. And I'm sure they'll have you know fun in the locker room. You know, Jacoby Myers is a, a very solid football player. He had trouble getting in the end zone, but he put up good stats. Now, obviously, the, last year the Patriot uh, offense struggled uh, quite a bit. But he's just a solid football player and another guy that comes from from a winning pedigree and all that kind of stuff. So uh, a familiar guy in the system. Again, he's not. I, if you told me four days ago that the Raiders would sign a receiver, I would have fell out of my chair. Like uh, to me, like the receiver position, I know they needed a three, a, a third receiver and maybe even a second guy now if whatever happens to Hunter Renfro. But um, I just didn't think receiver was the priority. And they go out and they sign Jacoby Myers and they go out and sign Philip Dorsett. But that's what you get. We saw the same thing with John Gruden. We saw it because, you know, Josh and John are offensive minded guys and they can't help themselves going into the room saying, mm -hmm. yeah, listen, I know our defense kind of stinks a little bit, but like we need this guy on offense right now. Like we have to sign him. And the GM's like, okay, uh, I guess. So, and you know, Jacob, said another guy that, Patriots yeah, I mean, Jacob, but Jacoby's yeah. a guy. I think he's a, he's, and this is no slight on Matt Collins. Matt Collins is a solid football player. But I think he's like Matt Collins on steroids a little bit. He's going to be a slot guy. He's going to be a guy that's going to be. And and two, what I mentioned before about Jimmy Garoppolo and a guy like Jacoby Myers is being better in the red zone. This team has just been so bad for years and years and years. I, they just have to be better in the red zone. I think a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, be able to fit the ball in tight spots. And I, got, I think a guy like Jacoby Myers, even though he doesn't put up monster touchdown numbers, he's a bigger target. And especially with the loss of Darren Waller, I think will be even more important. All right, last one. Just with the trade value that they got out of Darren Waller, fair, not fair? Could they have gotten better? I know, obviously, they look at all the options and they talk to all the teams, but is 100, that's the pick that they got for Darren Waller, <clears throat> of what you think is an equitable trade? No, I mean, it's it's hard to quantify because really the 100, Heidi, is, a, com is a, a compensatory pick, which is really a fourth round pick if you think about it. So it's really like the start of the fourth round-ish pick for Darren Waller. And, you know, last year we heard rumors that the Packers wanted him for a two and hindsight's always 2020. You always want to say, Hey, I wish I, we should have took that two and we could have got the chance. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, you know, things were different then and all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, it really was just about the salary. If Darren Waller was on an expiring contract or his contract was half that, you know, I really don't think the compensation would be anything else, but you know, they, at, at this, it's, it's better, it's better to get something like that than having just to straight up cut the guy and have egg on your face. And I think, you know, it's really about, you know, getting something in that third to fourth round, you know, earlier rounds and who knows? I mean, I really think, you know, there've been reports out there that they've, they've tried to trade up to the number one pick and they made some phone calls, who knows what, whether that's the case or not, but um, I really think that if they identify a quarterback in this draft that they love, you have to go up to pick three because the first, like I said before, the first two are going to be quarterbacks. You know, the Colts are sitting there at four, want the quarterback. I'm I'm really shocked that the Colts haven't traded with the Cardinals by now to the flop picks right? and to get up the, <laughs> and, and to get up to three. It's, it really shocks me, especially what happened with Carolina. Yeah. So I think if the Raiders <clears throat> identify it's one of the top three guys, they need to get on the phone like tonight and say you know what what arizona wants and say hey what can we do to get up there but it's going to cost it's not it's, it's going to cost you to go out there and get the get the player that you want 
and it's going to take away from you drafting some defensive players that could help. So it's it's not an easy situation for sure. Okay, I know I said last question, but I had to I really got to squeeze one more in here. Just okay. when you're talking about that with the draft picks, the capital that they have, mm -hmm. would you rather see them kind of package up some picks and move up, or would you rather see them? depending on what happens of course with the board you know, shake it out maybe drop that seven pick and pick up some more draft capital what would you rather see i think it's a it's a good question uh, you know i think we're the, the team is in a position that if the team identifies <clears throat> excuse me if the team identifies say let's just use anthony richardson at some point heidi you have to kind of swing for the fences right you kind of have to say Let's just go all in. If this guy is who we think he is, we look like geniuses and he's going to be the guy for years and years. Otherwise, you know, it's it's really trust. It, it's it's that and you're, you're trying to catch lightning in a bottle or it's we really trust what we are as developers. And I think that might be the latter part for Josh and company to say, we're going to sit here at seven, take the best defensive player in the draft. You know, we have enough draft picks. Let's let's just take the best player because we haven't had a ton of great defensive players. And then let's target a quarterback in the second round that we could really develop and turn into a really good football player. And I think that's the kind of the mindset uh, of Josh and go. But, you know, to me, if, if I was in those positions and obviously you and I are, are not in those positions to, to do this, you have to try. Right. You have to go up there and, and swing and miss because, you know, you don't get fired for. You know, you get fired for for losing. You don't get fired for you know spending money or trading draft picks. You can get fired for losing. And if you sit on your hands and do nothing about it, and you could have went up to the third pick, and the team jumps you and goes up and gets Anthony Richardson or Will Levis, and they turned out to be star quarterbacks, you're going to say, "What if we we had the chance and we just didn't do it?" So I just think at some point this franchise has to go out there, and it's been a long time um, since this team has drafted a quarterback in the first round to kind of go up there and say, this is going to be the face of the franchise. And I don't want to do it just out of necessity, but also too, is time is limited. If, if Josh and company, you know, go, you know, two and two and 15, or this team really, really hits a rough patch, you know, who's to say that the coach and GM is here next year. So if it was me in that, in that, in that boat, I would try to do everything I can to go up there and get the guy that I want. There you have it, Eddie Borsilli. He is the program director of Sirius XM Fight Nation and also his his podcast, Yards Per Attempt. You can catch that on RaidersBeat.com. Eddie, thank you so much for all of the time. Oh, and regular guest on Raider Nation Radio. Every yeah, Wednesday. baby. <laughs> <laughs> every Wednesday. Hi, you're, you're the best at what you do. I always appreciate taking the time mm -hmm. with you, everybody. Uh, everybody appreciate your knowledge. So appreciate you taking the time. Hey, back at you, man, really. And uh, everybody, check out all of our shows that we have on VegasNation.com three times a week, a podcast podcast will drop so make sure to keep up with all that we're doing there and we'll keep you up to date with that free agent press conference taking place at Raiders headquarters tomorrow that's it for Eddie Borsilli I'm Heidi Fang thank you so much for tuning in